I'm Jane Bear Lehman. I'm the chair of the Occupational Therapy Department. And more recently, I've been focused on managing the department. But prior to that, I've had an active research career that stemmed from my clinical work. And my clinical work primarily is in orthopedics and in hand therapy. And my major thrust in research has always been in terms of hand assessment and hand treatment in a minor way, but also what hand assessments really tell us about a population. Okay, occupational therapy has always looked at a developmental continuum of individuals ranging from infants and even infants born too soon to elderly and has looked at both the physical and the psychosocial issues that help individuals cope and adapt as they grow and expand. And it also has helped look at how we look at their occupation, and occupation in particular looking at how they perform the daily life tasks. And so we've always had um, a lot of career options in occupational therapy. Most of the goals of an entry-level professional program are to graduate generalists. Um, so that you can work with children, you can work with elderly, you can work in mental health facilities or physical disability settings, um, long-term or short-term or acute care. But the piece has always been that our goal has been helping through either uh, revising or restoring their loss impairment from an injury or an illness to be able to do their daily life tasks. And that's been the mainstay of occupational therapy since its inception. So we go and help people where they are and where they're, they're residing or where they're working. Most recently, I've been very involved in looking at the hand status of well elders. And that study started up while I was at Columbia University. And it was mounted um, in the Inwood Project, which is the very northern tip of Manhattan. And that goal was to look at the cognitive and impairment levels of well elders, which is defined as anyone over the age of 70 living from 155th Street um, in Manhattan to the very tip, um, which is very interesting part of Manhattan. It's very different than NYU's quarters in lower Manhattan in that the terrain is quite treacherous and the palisades are high. I was brought into a research project with cognitive and impairment look at community dwelling well elders, which are well elders who are over the age of 70 living on their own. Um, but living on their own could be defined that they were living independently on their own um, with a spouse or with a friend or by themselves in an apartment building. About a third of them were white. Um, they happened to be Jewish because there's a very Jewish population in the tip of Manhattan. A third Dominican Republic individuals, and a third um, are black. And they tend to cluster within their own groupings, so that it's not as integrated, it's more of a mosaic, if you will. And our goal was to evaluate them in terms of their status and to follow them. And so I was brought in primarily for the physical impairment measures, coming from my hand therapy background. And so we conducted all of our evaluations in their apartments. Um, myself and um, the PI of the study, as well as a research coordinator and um, occupational therapist to do a physical um, AMPS test, which is an activity daily living activity, um, to see how they performed. This seemed to be a very interesting piece. We also discovered that the apartment complexes tended to be communities for their are well elders. And even though they lived alone, a sister might also be living in the building, or close friends for 40 years were living in the buildings. And the doorman essentially became like the room mother um, and would let us know how anyone, everyone was doing. If they hadn't seen Mrs. Jones, they would start to be querying about her. So there was sort of a dorm-ish type of way of life that we were surprised to find, but glad to find. Um, we also discovered that everything within their apartment was within two blocks um, for life in terms of buying food, going to the pharmacy, going to out to dinner, um, social activities, um, everything, physicians, everything they needed was within the two blocks. Soon as the study was underway, we then discovered we wanted to look at what the effect of that urbanization community was and are now looking at the issue of social capital and the resources in terms of the social network that we did not set out to discover, but discovered that a lot of our individuals are on rent control buildings or rent stabilization buildings. And so the study is taking me from hands and gotten me into social capital. So it's moved me through the whole course of what occupational therapy is all about. 
um, starting out with my strength and as an pr approach for that kind of thing, but then moving into really how is the hand contributing to their daily life activities and their success. Research such as the Well Elderly Study that I'm still, we're in the process of writing the papers on, informs clinical practice and informs policy in a lot of different ways. Um, one, for example, in terms of clinical practice, is one of our discoveries from just using a tool f to measure hand strength has been that we've seen um, the capacity to measure individuals over the age of 70, and we go back and look at the norms in hand strength, they give five-year increments of what's expected for the scores, and then after the age of 70, they lump everybody from 70 to 100 together. So one of the findings we've been able to do is contribute to the literature, I in particular, in terms of breaking those increments down. And what we also have discovered in breaking them down is we found that there was a huge change in hand strength about the age of 82, as opposed to lumping them all together and not really recognizing it. We also have discovered that the dynamometer, which collaborates with some other studies, seems to be almost as an important indicator of physical status or health status as the blood pressure cuff, because we've noticed that if there is suddenly a drop in hand strength, that may herald future physical problems that are serious in nature. And so one of the arguments that we propose, have proposed from the study is to actually consider having internists or gerontologists consider the hand and held dynamometer and part of their physical findings when they see elderly individuals because it seems to be a critical sign that's important to look at. On the other side of it, we've also discovered that policy might be affected um, from our urbanization review and social capital we're now looking at that what happens if the rent control changes for our elders who are living in these apartments. They have this incredible social network where the pharmacist is aware that Mrs. Jones hasn't come to pick up her prescription, so is something wrong with her? Or that she's able to really function in a social arena with other friends and family in her same age range and not be dependent on her children and not be isolated. And that socialization, as we all know, keeps us all doing well and happy and have a nice coexisting life. And so what happens if suddenly the rent control building is no longer rent control, then those, those individuals have to find another place to live and that social supportive network that has been so dramatically um, important to these individuals is influenced in a negative way. Um, so a lot of adverse things could happen where the community dwelling well elder was, is no longer as productive.